Hen Queen. Once upon a cloud in the sky up above, Jupiter, you have been arrogant and rude. You think beauty is everything. Your pride will be the doom of the Celestials, and I will not let that happen. I command you to go to the planet of humans and return only when you learn the true meaning of love. But hurry away, Jupiter, before I lose my patience. Now. <sighs> Meet King Ephium, the fearless leader of the Empire of Siantok, who is well, a little excited today. Aha! Today's the day. <laughs> um, sire, if you could just stay still. <gasps> Ta-da! Sire. Why so sad? Today's the day, Tiana. Today's the day. <sighs> King Ephium was happy for today was the most important day of his life. It was the queen's ceremony. For today, King Ephium was to choose a bride to marry and make queen of the Empire of Siantok. <clears throat> um, sire, just to make it clear, as per tradition. You choose a woman to be your wife, but the woman you choose has to choose you back. Oh, pfft. look at these beautiful women in our palace, Tiana. They have already chosen me. Tiana was one of the closest aides for the king. He valued her judgment. But along with King Ephium's success came those who were always jealous of him. King's advisor, Chico, was one such person. And one by one, the maidens and queens began to introduce themselves. Oh, I can sew and juggle and and sew. Oh, I am the most intelligent princess around. Do you know what is two A plus three B? Oh, um, wait. I knew the answer to this. Two A plus. Huh? huh? Oh, my king, my dear, dear king! You are the most handsome man I have ever met. Tell me, oh, tell me, my king, how are you so handsome? Oh, <sighs> Tiana, they are all so beautiful and so talented. How do I choose one? I mean, I cannot marry more than one beautiful maiden. <clears throat> can I? Sire, there can only be one queen. And it will not be fair upon the others. I knew that. <sighs> How about the maiden who can sew? Well, sire, it is all we know about her that she can sew, because she repeated it twice. But you cannot choose your wife based on beauty. You have to get to know her and love her for who she is. Your esteemed Majesty, if I may. Haven't you heard about Mr. Doodle's beautiful daughter? Excuse me. Oh, <clears throat> pardon me, but that's what the town's people call Mr. Doodle. He lives on the other end of our empire, and it seems he has a mesmerizing daughter. He does. Well, then what are we waiting for? Send for Mr. Doodle and his daughter at once. As Mr. Doodle arrived with his daughter Polly. King Ephium could not take his eyes away from her. I am pleased to meet you, my beautiful maiden. I mean, I am obliged, Your Majesty. Sire, I am most honored that you have invited my daughter for the queen's ceremony. But I am afraid that she would not make for a fit queen. You see, she has traits of a hen, and I will marry her. Sire, are you sure? Absolutely. But of course, she has to choose me back. Cook a doodle doo. I do. <laughs> I love my daughter, Your Majesty. But you have to understand that her natural instincts are that of a hen, and they will never change. For instance, whenever she sees corn, she will give in to her natural instincts and pick the corn. I understand that she has her own personality, and I accept her with all my heart. <laughs> It was the most unusual marriage. Oh, oh, leaves gifts for me. 
King Ephiom began to fall deeper and deeper in love with his queen. <laughs> so much that King Ephiom forgot about being a king and was only the husband to his beautiful wife. The hand traits of his queen seemed not to bother the king at all. But Jiko was watching, nevertheless. And so were all the maidens who felt rejected and neglected. They were so jealous of the new queen that they named her the Hen Queen. She is a hen. She crows like a hen. Haven't you heard her cock-a-doodle-doo? <laughs> oh, I work in this palace, and I have heard some say that the king married the Hen Queen because he hated keeping an alarm clock. Cock-a-doodle-doo! <laughs> well, sadly, King Ephiom has fallen so deeply for his wife that he fails to see how different she is. <sighs> There's only some way to make the king see the consequences of his actions. There is! Can you see the consequences? Jiko and the maidens hatched a plan to embarrass the king and the queen. A few days later, Tiana, who was happy for the king, suggested that he throw a party in honor of the new queen. Chico and the maiden had found their opportunity. They thought that since it was suggested by Tiana herself, no one would doubt them. But Tiana always doubted Chico. The party was grand. There was food and entertainment. Many noblemen came to greet the new queen. But when all had settled down, and King Ephiom was about to make a toast to his newly wedded wife, the helper of the palace came in with a basket of corn and tripped. All the corn from the basket was scattered on the floor, and without thinking, <gasps> the kings and rulers of the kingdoms and empires could not hold any longer. <laughs> King Ephiom loved his wife, but he could not get over the humiliation. He sent his love back out of sheer embarrassment. Queen Polly returned to her home. Days passed and the king ached for his wife. He lost interest in his royal duties, and always sat alone in the dark. Seeing his pain, Tiana approached him and told the king about the conspiracy played by Jiko and the maidens. What? They will pay for plotting against the palace. <sighs> Tiana, but that doesn't change the fact that I betrayed my wife's trust. How could I do that to her? It wasn't her fault. Sire, if your love is as pure as the queen's heart, she will forgive you. The next morning, there was a knock on Mr. Doodle's door. <gasps> your Majesty! Quack, quack. I am here to see my wife. Ephiam! What are you doing? I am here to show how perfect we are for each other. If you are the hen queen, I am King Duck, the Ephiam. Quack, quack. You are embarrassing yourself. My love, I've made a mistake. I failed to accept you knowing who you are and how you have always been. I know now that our habits are what makes us unique. Your habits are not flaws. They make you, you. And you are a generous queen and a beautiful person. I love all of you with all of me. Queen Polly, will you accept my love? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Just then, Tiana was picked up in the air. <gasps> it's happening! Tiana? And to everybody's surprise, Tiana was transformed into the celestial prince, Jupiter. What is happening? I turn into a duck and you turn into a man? King Ephium. I am Prince Jupiter of the Celestial Realm. I made a mistake and was banished from my palace centuries ago, looking for true meaning of love. I roamed the world and finally have found it. 
the unconditional acceptance of King Ephium and Queen Polly is truly what love is. I can now return in peace. Return? But I will miss my advisor. King Ephraim, dear, we all love our home, and so must Prince Jupiter. <sighs> you served your duty to Siantuk well, Tiana. Uh, I mean Jupiter. I ache to have my dear friend leave, but I wish you all the best, and I promise I will never forget you. I will never forget you either, dear friend. Jupiter was welcomed back in his realm with love and respect. And back on Earth, Queen Polly was given her rightful place, and so were others. Jiko was, for instance, demoted from his position and made a stable boy. And as for the maiden, she was given the job of picking all the corn from all the fields of the Empire. And they all lived happily ever after. Well, almost all. Oh.